Are earthworms really good for your garden? Absolutely. Let me show you why. So hey guys, it's Daryl losing that simple living again today out here in the garden. So today we're going to talk about one of the most critical organisms that's out in your garden that can help your soil health. And that's the earthworm or nightcrawler. So everybody knows just how valuable an earthworm or nightcrawler is when we're out fishing. Put it on your hook, put it in, uh, in the water and catch a fish. So we know how that works. But not everybody knows just how important an earthworm or nightcrawler is to your garden. According to the USDA, there's no other living organism out in your soil um, that provides as much value um, to your soil health and quality than an earthworm. Therefore, an earthworm provides a heck of a lot of quality um, to your soil, which ultimately leads to your plants doing better and a bigger harvest. Let's get a better understanding of the intricate role an earthworm plays in the success of your garden. And as a bonus, I sowed a bunch of seeds uh, a couple weeks back in the video. I'll put a link to that um, where I planted a whole bunch of seeds out in the garden in the middle of the hot July uh, summer heat. And they're doing great. I'm going to give you a quick update on all those, how they've developed, how they come out of the ground. And I'll show you that. So just hang in there. If you haven't as yet, please subscribe. Uh, like the video. Feel free to share it. All right, let's get into it. All right, first some quick facts about earthworms. Now, earthworms are obviously harmless. Um, they don't bite, they don't sting, they don't do anything like that. But they are absolutely beneficial for our soil. Earthworms don't have lungs, they actually breathe through their skin. They have no eyes, so they use their senses to figure out which way they're going and where they're going. Earthworms are hermaphrodites. And what that means is they got both male and female reproductive organs. Um, so it doesn't really matter if they get together two earthworms, they're capable of having baby earthworms. Earthworms do burrow six and a half, seven foot deep. They typically don't come to the surface or all the way out of the surface uh, except at night. And hence the term, they're called night crawlers. Now the night crawlers have an average lifespan of six to nine years, some supposedly going up to 20, but if you're at the bait shop, it's gonna be less. So how do earthworms help the garden? What are the benefits? Earthworms in the soil increase your soil aeration, the infiltration, the drainage, structure, nutrient availability, and overall plant growth. They provide benefits to all those things. All right, so first we'll talk about uh, nutrient availability. So earthworms, they basically break down organic matter. They eat a little soil, but they break down or organic matter that's decomposing, and they excrete that from their bodies. And that's what you uh, refer to as as uh, earthworm castings that you can buy from a store. But those castings turns into a rich humus soil that has uh, nutrients that are readily available to the plants. And the way the earthworm's digestive system works, it basically concentrates uh, all the nutrients, all the minerals that are, that are in that decomposed matter, it concentrates it so the castings are richer in nutrients than actually the, the uh, organic matter that the earthworm ate. And the castings from the earthworm, they, they have you know potassium, nitrogen, phosphorus and magnesium and they're all in a readily form readily available form for the plant to, to take in and the castings also contain microorganisms um, as it's processed through the body or through the earthworm's body and that just helps helps amplify plant growth root growth uh, and makes just a much more um, a viable healthy soil to grow plants in all right the earthworms also improve drainage in your beds so when earthworm moves throughout the bed, they burrow, right? So they make these little tunnels. They secrete a fluid that kind of acts as a, a cement, so it kind of bonds the side walls of the burrows. And that kind of keeps those burrows open, um, allowing good drainage through there. And this loosens and aerates the soil as they burrow through the soil. So in studies of soil with a, a, a big earthworm population, it'll actually drain water uh, up to 10 times faster uh, than not having a bunch of earthworms. And in raised beds, water infiltration, how deep it gets is much higher, especially uh, is about six times higher, especially in a raised bed versus your traditional cultivated row. As mentioned, the earthworms as they burrow, they have a, they secrete a chemical um, that kind of acts as a bonding agent or a uh, kind of a cement that, that helps hold the side walls of their burrow um, together. So from a structural standpoint, um, those burrows, which helps aerate the soil and allows water down into the soil, uh, it, it allows that to happen longer than it would be um, without that secretion. So this improves soil structure 
of course helps the soil stability. So as mentioned, when they burrow, um, the soil porosity, so that's the space in between all, all the different pieces of the clay, the, the sand, the soil, the hummus, the, all that stuff together makes the soil loose and friable or keeps the soil loose and friable. It's not all compacted like you would be if you're walking on the soil. And that's what one of the benefits of raised, that's one of the key things about raised beds is you don't want to walk on the soil. The soil stays nice and loose and friable and it just gives you the overall better soil health. And the increased porosity of the soil decreases the amount of compaction or density of the soil, which is absolutely beneficial, uh, especially for raised beds, because you, you're not walking in the soil once or twice a season. You may get, get your uh, pitchfork and, and loosen that top layer up or uh, stir in some or amend your soil a little bit. Um, that's about it. You don't walk on your soil in a raised bed. Now, what does this mean to us gardeners? What it means is we want to preserve and, and nurture earthworms sounds crazy as much as we can because it ultimately makes our garden much more healthy and robust and a bigger harvest so the question is how do we go about doing that what can we really do to affect the amount of earthworms in our garden number one is the pH so you gotta ensure the pH is above 4.5 uh, earthworms require calcium as part of their diet in soils that are low in pH typically don't have any calcium available um, whereas you get up above 4.5, then there is calcium uh, that's available within the soil. Next is increased organic matter. I stated earlier, earthworms get their nutrients from decomposing organic matter. So any organic matter you make available to those earthworms out in the garden, um, the healthier they're going to be. Now mulching, especially with leaf mulching, leaf mold, they really like that in their garden. They will stay in that particular raised bed or even in a flower pot, they'll stay in there if they have everything that they need to be happy. I typically mulch the top of my raised beds with uh, leaf mold. And then at the end of the season when I pull the plants, I'll uh, dig that in, not super deep, but on the top, top six to eight, 10 inches. Try not to kill a bunch of earthworms when you do it, but you dig that in. So you're giving more food to the earthworms and you're actually uh, gonna benefit by having more nutrients um, for the, your plants to, to use. Now you also got to be careful with uh, certain fertilizers and fungicides. Highly acidifying uh, fertilizers like ammonium sulfate and some fungicides, uh, some copper fungicides, things of that nature, they tend to uh, cause a lot of problems for earthworms. So you want to try to avoid those when possible. This is a two-part about moisture and water. So you want to keep your soil moist. So earthworms lose about 20% of their weight throughout the day through mucus or, or excrement discharge, right? So they end up uh, losing 20%. So keeping that soil moist, moist allows them to get their water intake and uh, helps build their body back up. So in short, they need a, a continuous uh, amount of moisture to live. And this ties back in with your mulch, and especially leaf mulch. When you mulch your garden, you're gonna actually keep your soil uh, moist because it kind of stops the water from evaporating out of the top of the soil. Um, so that ties in uh, real good with the mulch, keeping your soil moist, but also allows a drainage uh, if you get a heavy rain pour. And then on the flip side of having that moisture, you also want it to, to have a good drainage. You don't want it to sit with water, waterlogged for any continuous amount of time. And of course, you've heard me talk about that on, the, uh, on various other videos, but raised beds the way to go from a drainage standpoint. If you don't have really good drainage in your traditional uh, cultivated rows, raised beds work great for that and a number of other reasons. And so they help reduce soil compaction. And that's another big advantage of raised beds, of course, is you're not walking on the soil that your plants are gonna grow in or that your earthworms are gonna be living in. Um, so they're not all compacted down. And when they burrow, they actually help that, uh, that structure of the soil to keep it loose and friable. And another way to help is just reduce cultivation. So if you would pull a tractor out and run a plow through the yard or through your old garden, um, or you pulled your tiller out, you buried two, three foot deep and you're with your tiller in, the, in your backyard garden, let's just say, you're gonna kill a lot of earthworms. There's a lot of earthworms out there, but there ain't no sense in killing the ones that are active in your soil. And so that's one of the advantages of the raised beds. Again, another advantage, it's a no-till type of deal. Um, the earthworms you have, they colonize that place and they, they, they stay there through their whole lives. Um, still, just uh, it's a way to keep your earthworms here, 
and being a, a top benefit to your garden. One way to tell if you got a garden that's got good soil is to get a shovel and dig in, see how many earthworms you got right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dig. Watch what happens here when I dig a shovel full. Here's another one. Here's another one. Six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, it's, they're just all in here. Ten, eleven. 12, 13. So there you go. Man, they're just all over. 13, I hadn't even got to all of them yet. There's 13 of them, just that one little uh, scoop of dirt. I'm gonna put them back. Thanks, earthworms. Good to eat your job. I'm gonna cover you up a little bit. It's just gonna happen. Anytime I see an earthworm, I'll pick him up, go put him in my garden, or put him in one of the pots, and uh, let them go in and, and help those plants. With all that being said, if we just make sure we're cognizant of the value of earthworms, we don't do things that'll kill them off. Um, we understand the value they provide for our soil, which ultimately means plants grow better, which means you get a, be a better uh, harvest. All right, one little bonus item on the back end of this uh, video on earthworms is I was going to give you a quick update. All right, so we got some Minnesota midget uh, melons. These are only supposed to grow three or four uh, foot long vines. Okay, hey, Croy. This was uh, some heirloom pumpkin seeds that my uncle and aunt in law sent to me. And uh, don't know what kind they are. We're going to find out. Down here, I got some Clay County yellow meat watermelon. Down here, I got a, I can best pronounce, Cocozella dendipoli squash. It's basically a zucchini squash. It'll grow out pretty big. It spreads out. If you see in here, there's some gourds that are growing. A little birdhouse gourd. Some of these have, uh, like this has the, the neck, a birdhouse neck, like I would imagine. This is just straight, so I'm not sure why those are that way. Anybody knows? Let me know. If you look at these along the trellis right here, those are um, piggot southern peas, and they're from a, they're a Louisiana variety from the piggot family, Washington, Paris, since 1850s. Now we planted some okra right here, got some Alabama red. And this is some Fort Portal Jade bean. They're, They're a green type of bean. Um, looks like the I'm about to spray maybe uh, a little Nemo or something. Looks like something's eating the leaves here. Same thing on this Georgia Southern Collards right here. And this is my Jing Orange Okra. Growing real well. Some of them getting a little eat up on the leaves. And then finally over here we got this uh, a table bush king squash and that's an uh, acorn type of squash. I did plant right here some Chinese cabbage, some Hilton Chinese cabbage. They're getting eaten up pretty good. I imagine just the snails are getting there but I probably need to spray. Oh and this is the those lima beans. Um, if you remember episode feedback uh this was had a major problem with aphids uh, a couple other kind of bugs we took care of them and uh seems to be growing pretty well now yeah so all that's in my backyard these are some other ones that i just planted uh 
I want to say it was that next weekend. But you got a couple different things. You got a uh, water, Wilson Sweet Watermelon. In the back, another uh, Minnesota Midget Melon. You got a Moon Stars Cherokee Watermelon. You got Old Time Tennessee Melon. Over on this side, we have another uh, Minnesota Midget Melon. In the back, the Maduras Rasachan Honey Melon. Those are good. I did another Moon of Stars Cherokee. And this is a Clay County Yellow Meat Watermelon. So, just trying to uh, put some out here. And I'm going to let them grow along the ground. And uh, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll grow pretty good out here. Hey, thanks for joining me back at Louisiana Simple Living again today. Even with all this heat in July, um, the garden's still doing pretty well. I've had to pull a few plants, going to have to pull a few more. But overall, still doing really well. Um, you saw I sowed some seeds a couple weeks ago on July 11th. And then we just kind of took a look at, uh, gave an update of those. They're all out of the ground and growing. May have to spray one or two of them, but they're looking pretty good. But I got to give credit where due. Um, earthworms. All the earthworms that are in our soil um, continue to do a lot of things. They're kind of the original farmer, right? So they're doing all these things underneath the soil to get our crops, to get our plants able to grow as well as they can. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like the video, and share it. And if you got any suggestions on um, anything you'd like to see, or questions, or, or corrections uh, maybe you think that I missed on, please put comments down below. I love comments, love to answer questions, and that's kind of my passion is to, to I'm passionate about gardening, passionate about passing some of that knowledge on. But hey, just as a reminder, um, make memories now rather than later. You know, this old, I don't know how created or invented this crisis we're currently in is, but the, the new COVID kind of variant coming out, sound like we're all gonna be in mass potentially again. Um, nevertheless, there are some people, although limited, some people that are getting sick from it. So hey, make memories now rather than later. And as always, I'll see you on the next video.